All right. So, hi, Dr. Wong. Um, it's so great to be able to chat with you. I'll just ask you a couple of questions. You can feel free to answer them and tell us a little bit about yourself first. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, asking me to do this. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm a medical physicist and have been working with the oncologists at the London Regional Cancer Program, both clinically and uh, with research. And over the years, I've developed a deep connection with some of these physicians and uh, some were generous with their time and had given talks to uh, first year physics class during the winter term, especially. Um, I'm also the father of two daughters who are in university. Um, and uh, let me tell you that one of them used units in their calculation and one does not. <laughs> it cannot be more different and, and represent the two ends of the spectrum that I see in first year students. Definitely. That's awesome. So uh, my second question is, do you have any advice for students considering the new online course structure? So as you know, physics is going to be completely online this year. So any tips in terms of mental health, best methods for studying, um, or anything else you'd like to talk about? Okay. Um, we are aware of um, um, different issues that are facing first year students, especially put on by COVID-19. Um, and, and even before then, uh, there were a number of issues facing first year students. And so COVID-19 just add to it. Um, so this could be uh, financial, uh, you know, students may have to get loans now or do part-time job. Um, and and health-wise, I also know that a lot of people, uh, because of lack of physical activities, they, 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 be, they gain weight and become less healthy. Um, of course, there's, there's also lack of social opportunities to interact with each other, other than texting or Snapchatting, which probably don't count. <laughs> Um, and also, you know, for online courses, uh, I think um, uh, uh, one has to treat that as personal growth. So I'd like to touch on a couple of these issues uh, now, if I may. Yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, I, I find some one of the advice that I, 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 I think uh, helped a lot is that uh, uh, it's for physical health. So find a proper chair and desk. Uh, a quiet place, uh, get an external monitor. Don't look at that tiny screen the whole day long. Um, and there's a 2020 rule. I don't know if you heard of it. Um, so 20 minutes of screen time, uh, 20 seconds looking at 20 meters or further away. So keep that 2020 rule uh, in mind and really get a minimum of uh, 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise. Uh, per week and during the exercise, make sure you uh, make, get your heart rate up uh, to 50 to uh, to 80 percent of your maximum heart rate. And make sure you take care of your physical health. Uh, for mental health, I feel like get organized. Definitely, it's it's so much more important now that it's online. You need to get organized. Uh, use a planner. Plan your day. I, if I were doing it, I would plan my day like I am going to class. Um, so slot in the hours, even though the class may not have hours, you assign hours to them. Um, put down the deadlines and quizzes on your planner and uh, like the game uh, Snakes and Ladder that you hopefully all are familiar with, you will fall behind, but you also have opportunity to catch up. So keep that in mind. And a couple other comments on the personal growth side on, on how you treat I mean, treat the online courses as growing, like an opportunity to, to grow. Uh, so my, my advice is don't waste time doing things because you can get grades. Uh, you are getting the, you're taking the courses to make yourself better. And furthermore, you're not trying to hone in Googling skills. You're trying to uh, um, become good at thinking and grow your mind. Um, so part of university is really finding out what you like and what you don't like, what you're good at and what you're not good at. And, and uh, part of my why of doing this is really is to inspire students to understand their own strengths and weaknesses and help them become competent in their weak weaknesses 
and, and achieve excellence with their strengths. Yeah, that's awesome. I think yeah. that's really good. Um, so you are the physics prof for, um, I believe, 1301 and 12, 1020, 1029, correct? Yes. Yes. So is there anything you want students coming into your course to know? Um, yeah. Uh, beyond uh, 1029 and 1301, uh, I am also involved in 1028. Um, we are um, doing a number of things. So we have spent some time uh, researching tools that allow students to interact with each other. Um, and instead of focusing us pushing content out to the students and watch the equivalent of three hours per week videos. Uh, this would include small group textbook reading on a platform called Proviso. And we are currently setting up a platform where students can take a photo of their work that they're problem or that, that they're working on and problem that they are stuck at and they can post them up so that our teaching assistants can answer that and we have put a lot of resources uh, uh, in terms of ta hours uh, to give feedback to students during the week um, so that students can get specific and direct feedback to, to each and individual problem. For 1301 students, we also created group assignments. So, you know, we make them work. Well, hopefully it will be creating an environment where they enjoy interacting, talking to each other when you don't have that kind of uh, uh, interactions now online. So we're creating things so that students would interact with each other. That's really good. I think that's really important, especially with all the courses being online, yeah. uh, many students will probably, you know, miss having that interaction with their classmates. Yeah. Um, so my next question is, do you have any tips for students in the course in order for them to succeed? So for example, any tips in terms of keeping on top of readings or where they can go for extra help, anything like that? So like I said before, before we had dealt with the hand of COVID-19 and uh, instead of uh, moaning about it, uh, turn this into an opportunity and, and you know, take charge of, of your own of students' development. Uh, take charge of your own development. And maybe perhaps uh, like to talk about stress. Uh, so stress comes from a number of things. Um, and, and I think as first year student, and I'll, I'll address a few things uh, related to that. Um, is when you're stuck uh, at something, don't first year student, their first year, ask questions. It's okay to ask questions. Don't worry about what other people are saying. It is about your development. So ask the TA questions and get feedback. Ask questions on the video lectures if you don't understand. Um, uh, and, and so, uh, uh, overcome that fear of asking questions because this is your right. Uh, this is students' right. You're here to learn. We are, we are here supposedly to help you learn. So if you don't ask questions, you don't get feedback. I don't know how you're going to learn. Um, second thing about also uh, dealing with stress is that uh, you couldn't learn by cramming things the last minute. So spread things out. Uh, you're taking four or five courses uh, over the term. Uh, don't wait till the deadline comes. So start start things early and, and, and give yourself a couple of days for buffer. You don't know what happens. You, you may have an uh, internet problem uh, the day the deadline is due and then you're stuck. Um, it's not a big deal and, and, and that is that uh, if you drop a course, and uh, you can take it uh, later on in the summer months or what, whatever. Uh, so if you feel that taking five courses is too much to handle, you can drop a course and this year is November 9th, the drop date. There is no penalty. It, it's just, you know, you will take more time or, or to take that course again. Um, and, and if you feel like you fell behind too far, uh, just do it. Uh, and, 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 you know, you consult other students who had gone through this. And, and really, my, my advice really is to uh, uh, 
think of first year as preparing for second year, third year, and fourth year. If you only study and focus on getting the grades, like my assignment is due, I'm just going to copy the answer. I know this is right. I don't understand why, and just just do it. Just do it for grades, rather than do it to improve yourself. Uh, students will have a harder time uh, building materials on in second and third year on on this weak weaker foundation. Definitely, I agree. Um, first year is definitely a really important time to like build study skills and also build the foundation for the courses they take in the future. Um, so my next question is, as you know, many first year students are interested in getting involved with faculty as well as in research. So do you have any advice for them as well? Are you involved in any research? So I'm involved in uh, medical physics research and uh, I spend time uh, doing research with physicians. Uh, and um, my, my main point here is that you don't really need to be a physician or go to med school to make a difference in patients' lives. You can choose whatever you like. So for me, I like physics and you know, I find a way to contribute to treating patients and improving the lives through radiotherapy. Uh, there are many other ways to do it. You can do it, you know, if you like, yeah, biochem, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, even sociology, uh, psychology, they're always an area where you can make lives better for patients. Um, so so my, my, my feeling is that for first year students, you need to hone in on a skill, a skill that you're really good at that you can contribute to whoever research area is. Uh, that you're interested and if you have a skill to offer then then the uh, uh, principal investigator or supervisor would be more likely to to hire to to get you on board um, and there are thousands of first year students and not only first year students there are also second year students third year students fourth year students so put your shoes in the research lab uh, and, and uh, situation um, that uh, we would rather hire someone who has skills and they are more mature students like third and fourth year. So for first year, the best bet is to volunteer your time. Uh, shadow a researcher, uh, volunteer your time. That's the best way of doing it like, or getting started in an area. I agree. That's very important. Yeah. Um... All right, and my last question for you is, so a lot of students coming in to first year, especially in science or medical science, um, they always ask a very common question about which physics should I take? Should I take 1028 and 1029 or should I take 1301 and 1302? So maybe you could speak upon the differences between the two and any advice for students unsure about which, which physics to take. So I've been teaching um... 1029 and 1302 uh, in alternate years almost um, uh, for, for six or seven years now um, and gained a lot of experiences and, and, um, and because of that I have started to change and morph the courses. So um, because of that continuously changing uh, things and, and comparing 1301 and 1028. And also because of COVID-19, we're going online with our group reading of the textbook. So this year, uh, we are choosing the same textbook in 1301 as 1028. When we ask students to read a textbook, we want them to understand and not, not let math get in the way. So we have the same textbook. Uh, very similar assignments. Um, the uh, videos, the approach we took is that uh, we took a team approach. So we have uh, three instructor, first year instructor, and we divide the courses up into three different uh, portions. So the first portion will be taught by Professor Pepping. The middle portion will be taught by myself 
and the third part will be taught by Professor Seeker. By dividing it, we can create more uh, better content uh, for the online course. And these are the videos that are common to both courses. So make reducing the difference. Uh, 1301 has a little bit different in, in that we are adding group uh, assignment. And, and so that gives students a bit more uh, uh, opportunity to inter interact with each other. Um, the labs, uh, there are the same number of labs between uh, 1028 and 1301. The focus is slightly different. They're, they're doing uh, three labs but different. Um, and and um, like I have taught before um, in 1029, who you some of you have taken and, and, and could could uh, could vouch for that. I, I we we are not even though we said it's calculus based. I'm not dumping calculus to the students. Um, and, and so it, we are doing it in a, in a uh, uh, more um, uh, uh, how do I say this a, 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 a way that would uh, make sure that uh, what we teach and what you learn are, are compatible um, so, so we, we are paying attention to the feedback that we had in the past and we are again tuning the courses. So the difference between 1028 and 1301 is, is, will be very minor this year. Um, so feel free if you feel like doing it, like right now there would be, there are 1400 students registered in 1028. There are just under 400 students in 1301. If you Obviously, with fewer students, we get to interact more with students. So, um, you know, there, there's a chance that you can you can uh, switch over if you like. Uh, if you don't like, if you like to stick with whatever that you you know in the past, stick with 1028. Um, the differences are smaller than before. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, so that is all the questions I have for you today. Um, thank you so much for joining me and um, have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too.